See, the problem with the world today. The world? All of it? Oh, I'm interested. Is that a lot of y'all men will never talk what a real man is and what a real man does. Do we not? Oh, sorry about that. Well, I'm excited to hear what a real man is. Hopefully from a real woman. Continue. A real man works seven days a week. Seems excessive, but okay, seven days. Comes home to his stay-at-home wife. Okay, well, I hope she's got company. Cooks her a hot meal. Of course, she needs to eat, doesn't she? Does the laundry. That's fair. Can't have you smelling now, can we? Make sure her nails and toes and her hair is done. Working seven days a week won't stop this man from becoming a beauty therapist as well. Serves her. What with? A restraining order? Does the dishes. Anyone else start getting the feeling she's taking the piss? Make sure the kids are put away to sleep. Keep them away from your lazy ass, more like. Gets up in the morning, get them ready for school. Then hop on the plane to get away from that woman as far away as you possibly can. And do it all over again. That's the real man. Shalom. Call Lamla Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rakwakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son. And our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles in Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. A shaded lens. So the entire world sees an alternate reality through the lens of Esau. I mean, he saw that movie, They Live. Those that wore the shades, they could see. And when they took off the shades, they could not see the world for what it is. So this Bible removes the veil of deception where we can see reality in its raw, pure sense. Many Eves are delusional. They've been taught that their coochie is the prize. All they have to do is give that up and they're a queen. When you look at that word queen, it comes from the origin in the etymology, quayan, which means prostitute, harlot. So the world is in a gross delusion and under a queen of heaven, feminine vibration. And I got this video from the beloved Elder Malcolm out of Chicago. So I'm going to go into it. So when you listen to this woman, she's on the level of a tub of Vaseline. I can just get me a tub of Vaseline and get the same benefit out of that compared to this woman. So she's equivalent to a 50 cent tub of Vaseline. I can get the same satisfaction out of that. That's basically what she is on the level of. Okay? Use your imagination. This woman is crazy. Well, this man is do doing everything. All you bring to the table is a damn fairy strawberry. That's it. Or a hairy peach. That's all you bring to the table. Oh, into the Bible. What is a man according to the scriptures? So the title, David's Charge to Solomon. Excuse me. 
I'm going to go into King David's charge to Solomon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 2. Now in the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Go to 1 Kings 2, verse 3. <coughs> Excuse me. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 2, verse 3. And keep the charge of the Lord thy power to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. <coughs> So this is the blueprint. This is the formula for success. A master recipe from the chief chef, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. I mean, you've ever heard the term recipe for success? It's by following the instructions sent from on high. See, 1 Kings 2, verse 4, that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, if thou children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart, and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. So this is the way of kings, rulers. This is how rulers think. So we have the explanation and we have the interpretation of how to rule, step by step, following the will of the Father, not worshiping Eve's coochie. Look at the condition of our men today, at the bottom, not knowing how to rule or lead. A good old step and fetch it, trying to figure out how to cater to a feminine spirit. We're wired differently. We are designed to be the head, the ruler, decision makers, leaders, not being driven by emotion, feelings, but driven by the inspiration of the Almighty from on high. King Solomon told the two women arguing about who their, whose baby that was. One of the women was lying. She was not the mother. And the other woman was the rightful mother. What did King Solomon say? Let's cut the baby in half and give both of you women half of the baby each. So a man makes decision based on logic and spiritual reasoning. So the real mother did what? She can have the baby because the real mother did not want to see harm done to the young child. So when the fake mother got quiet and agreed to get half the baby, King Solomon applied wisdom. Walk in the ways of the Most High. Do His will. So the day of the simp is dying. No woman respects a bitch-made man. 
Let me say that again. No woman respects a bitch-made man. Maybe temporarily, but that's, that's dying. It's played out. Let's go here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 5. Let's go here first. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 4. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their power. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. So the weak men, the weak leaders, and those kings of Judah in Israel that are not sincere are keeping us in a state of servitude. The habitations of sin is bondage. But we're being released from this mental and spiritual prison on the chains of darkness, which starts with emptying out or cleansing our spiritual temple, our mind, which leads to being delivered out of the state. Let's go up to the top here. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5, let's go to verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. Men are judges, rulers of the house of David, absent from emotion, Fear, bias. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 2. And though they say, the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. So there's a couple of men that are even teaching that refuse to receive correction. These men are back today teaching the kings of Judah and the kings of Israel. They're refusing to come to the full gospel. And they hate correction. They hate order. They hate being reproved, admonished, warned. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their power. See, they're poor. The habitations of sin is bondage. So these men are back today. They believe in goddess worship. They believe in being seduced by the queen of heaven and rejecting wise counsel, the instruction from the fourth dimension, the wisdom of the Most High. Let's close out here. 
I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can read that on your own. But I just want to get the key point. So Samuel, as a young man, was raised up in charge with rebuking the priest Eli and the wicked sect of the priesthood of the Israelites that were going off. Go here to 1 Samuel 3. See, right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 16. The Israelites were going off here. Read the previous chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 2, and then read this entire chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 3. They were giving abominable sacrifices unto the Most High. And they were, what they were doing was bringing harlots to the temple, to the door of the tabernacle. So they were not separating the holy from the profane. 1 Samuel 3, verse 16. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. Let's look at this word, Eli. <laughs> Comes from a Hebrew. Strong's H, 5941. Eli. Ailey. Ascension, descendant of Aaron, lofty, lofty, see, proud, an Israelite high priest. So the priesthood was going off, and the kings of Israel and Judah. First Samuel three or seventeen. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. Tell the whole truth. That's the key point. Not just teaching a partial doctrine or the feel-good stories. Let's read it again. Now, Samuel is a young man. 1 Samuel 3, verse 17. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, if not, hide it not from me. I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. So even if the gospel hurts, it's the bitter medicine, the hard pill to swallow, so to speak. So medicine goes in bitter, but is a sweet honey, a natural raw honey that heals us over time, the bittersweet pill of the truth. So some of these guys, and I won't call any names, just want the feel-good stories, not the bittersweet pill of the full gospel. And that includes bugged out Eves from this video. Bug out. 
1 Samuel 3, verse 18. And Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Bathsheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. See? So many are realizing who the true prophets are. And the bulk of those true men reside under the men of the great millstone. And there are other outposts of the men that teach similar doctrine. But the bulk of the truth is resonant under the men of the great millstone and various other outposts of the men teaching a similar doctrine, like men of valor. Let's get one more. <clears throat> No, let me see here. <clears throat> I'm going to go to right here. Let's go to Zechariah and close out there. And go to Zechariah chapter 11, verse 13. Let's go to verse 3, excuse me. Zechariah 11, verse 3. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled, a voice of the roaring of young lions. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled, failing for not doing the will of the Most High. Thus saith the Lord God, Zechariah 11, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, my power feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. For they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. <clears throat> so the leadership fails first, the priests, the kings, and the flock falls to the slaughter when the shepherds are not right or are hired. Trying to think of that term. Yeah, there um you had the true shepherds, the real leaders, and then also hired part-time servants that really didn't care for the for the flock. Let's see if I can find that. <coughs> I had no intentions to make this long. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Right here. Okay, here we go. John 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. This is what the men are doing. They're true leaders. There is no greater love than for one to lie down or lay down his life for his brother. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he 
that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not. Seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. And that's what the fake leaders are doing. Bowing down to this system. Not standing up for truth's sake. For righteousness sake. Not teaching the MOTB, the Mark Martial Law. A economic collapse of Babylon. They are just part-time lovers. That's what these men are. No different from a harlot. As long as the price is right, they'll just do whatever they're told. That's the same level of a harlot. So these men are harlots. As long as their tithes are right, their tithes and offerings, their donations, as long as the bribery price is right, they're easily paid off to do a service and bow down with their face down and backside up to this beast system. And the Wada El Namakama for sharing this video and all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, or Kwakadash, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Hopefully, this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh. All praises to Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rikwakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? And who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? The true men and leaders of the tabernacle of David. Pam Yasharala and the Ba Baal Barakatham Shalom.